There has been one man in the world's mind lately, and his name is Donald Trump. I've been a follower for politics for a while now, and I've never seen someone like Trump before. From when George W. Bush first got elected to now, I've seen some pretty radical people, but none that could become such a strong voice for the underbelly of America like Donald Trump did. Trump, according to RealClearPolitics.com, enters the White House with a 58.5 disapproval rate. So I'm not, I know I'm not alone in the thought that Trump shouldn't have been elected president. But there are some pretty devoted, passionate, devoted Trump supporters out there who do think he's the right man for the job. Some issues are more important than others in regards to presidential candidates. But there are a few I feel should stand out to everyone, including to the Trump supporters who may be listening. To me, these disqualified Trump supporters, this, this, to me, these issues disqualify Trump, Trump in my mind to be United States president, and I would like to focus on how truly important they were in doing so. I'd first like to address Trump's position on the environment and how Trump has not promised an environmentally friendly future. And then second, I would like to fo focus on Trump's road to the White House and how it cannot be forgotten, specifically in regards to some of the more obtuse things he said and proposed on that road. The first point of Trump has not promised an environmentally friendly future. According to NASA, 97% of actively publishing climate scientists have come together, together to determine that climate change is indeed real. It's as real as the fact that dinosaurs have walked this earth. I sympathize with those who want to consider climate change as some kind of conspiracy or hoax. But the evidence is there, and I encourage you all to do your own research with an open mind. Anyway, Trump specifically on this issue of climate change can somewhat vary. At some points, he has said that climate change is, is phony in its totality, and at other points, he has just expressed that the media overplays climate change's impact. With James Lovelock of The Guardian saying we should expect violent storms to be the norm in the next 20 years, I personally cannot stand by and say Trump's public statements have been okay. The media can definitely overplay certain things, but even if it does with climate change, which is debatable, Climate change needs to be taken seriously. What is the point of anything if you can't ensure a world in the future that can sustain the existence of the human race? To me, other issues almost seem petty compared to the problem of climate change and the ongoing issue of protecting the environment. Those issues are definitely not petty, but faced with a future where our world is uninhabitable, uninhabitable for our future generations, they fall short in terms of gravity. Several weeks ago, Trump has said he will appoint a climate change denier as the head of the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. And at other points, he, he has considered the idea of dismantling the EPA altogether. We are currently at a breaking point. Many scientists have said it's too late to reverse the damage of climate change, but many of those said that we, we can reduce the violent damage. As we look here at this picture, it, once it shows up, we will see an example of a violent storm happening in the Philippines. If I haven't convinced you, already that climate change should be the top issue for our president by now, I probably can't do it. However, I will say that regardless of how any of any of his other policies, Trump has shown a, in public a regressive stance on the world's most important issue. The road to the presidency cannot be forgotten. The main opposition to a Trump presidency was Hillary Clinton's campaign. Hillary Clinton was far from perfect, and as we saw on election night, it dissuaded many voters from voting for her. Many of Trump's antics, or Trump being Trump, also dissuaded many from voting for him, but he didn't lose as many of his party voters as Hillary did. Hillary did not win over the Democratic Party, like Obama did, and with good reason. The email situation, her war hawk ties, and the DNC conspiracy to stop Bernie Sanders from becoming the party's nominees is a good enough reason to not want to be president. It's understandable that many of you didn't want to vote for her in this election, but that doesn't mean a vote for Trump was the right answer. Hillary lost many potential supporters with their involvements, but it seems like Trump didn't lose many of his base supporters. Trump built his campaign around nationalism and the feeling, and the, and the feeling that things in America should be greater than they are. Prior to his campaign, he insisted that soon-to-be President Barack Obama wasn't born in the U.S. It's okay to bring into question your president's legitimacy, but there was no prior evidence to really expect otherwise that he wasn't born in the U.S. For me, this left a really bad taste in my mouth and gave me a negative view of Trump going to the start of his run towards the presidency. I could overlook this, but in the, 
a coming days when he suggested that the wall we build on the border of the U.S. and Mexico, Trump became somewhat became someone that was hard to take seriously. Republicans are not wrong their desire to address the issue of illegal immigration, but the wall was an impractical issue from the start. According to politicalfact.com, the wall would have cost anywhere from five to $25 billion, an impractical solution to the issue. On a personal level, the wall made me feel very sad in thinking the future of this country. We don't need open borders, but someday we need to realize that people from different, different ethnicities and countries are not those to fear, but are people who are not so different from us. Later, Trump said things like John McCain was not a war hero, calling for the Mus Muslim ban, among other things. Things that fail in, in, in terms of gravity to what Hillary Clinton did. We, and she did some very serious things that we all need to take seriously. We cannot forget these things that Trump did. We can't forget what Hillary did, but we can't, but Trump supporters should not have ignored or belittled any of the statements Trump has made when they made their decision to vote. When Trump, what Trump has said on his road to the White House should have disqualified him from many of your minds. He didn't have to be replaced with Clinton, but he showed enough to where he shouldn't have been considered for president. In conclusion, some issues are more important to others in regards to presidential candidates, but, but there are a couple I feel should stand out to everyone, including the Trump supporters who may be listening. To me, these issues disqualify Trump in my mind to be the president of the United States. I addressed Trump's position on the environment, how Trump has not promised an environmentally friendly future. And then secondly, I focused on Trump's road to the White House and how it cannot be forgotten now. Specifically in regards to some of the more obtuse things he said and proposed on that road. Many people have said to give Trump a chance. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. Maybe just give him the benefit of the doubt. But I'll take that mainly as, don't get in the way of Trump trying to enact legitimately good policy. As our new president, we should support him. But for all he's done and for all he said, we should not forget. We should all keep it, keep it in mind what I've spoken about today because we may see it at least in glimpses in his proposed policy, and as a populist, we should be ready for it. Right now, Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. He will have a legacy when he's all said and done, and as a people, we will too. So please think of your actions wisely over the next four years. Thank you.